Hey, I watched your video, uh, and I uh, noticed some things, and I honestly just don't think you gave a great representation of Christianity in your comparisons. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and take your invitation to do a reply video, and uh, I'm going to list some points. Uh, I'm just going to go point by point uh, compared to what you said. Uh, I found that, that I've got a lot to reply, so I'm going to have to do these videos in parts, um, multiple parts. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to give you kind of my thoughts on what you've said. And, uh, yeah, so first of all, I just want to say I'm glad that you are happy with your life as an atheist. Uh, we've only got one uh, go around, this merry-go-round, and... Uh, after that, you, uh, well, this life is done, and either you're, uh, you're going to like what you did or not. Uh, so, I hope you are really, really happy with your life. Uh, I've, jo I've jotted down a lot of notes that you'll probably see me looking down and reading, uh, so that way I don't miss anything and don't uh, misrepresent what I want to say. Uh, first off, I just want to kind of say this. I'm not going to be commenting too much on what it, uh, an atheist life is like. I'm not going to be claiming to know what you go through as an atheist. I'm not going to be claiming to uh, uh, anything uh, to know much about what you experience as an atheist because I haven't been an atheist. I haven't lived an atheist life. There's been no point in my life that I have uh, uh, intentionally said there is no God and I will live as such. Um, I've always had the belief that there is a God. Uh, there, I mean... I have uh, I have run from God, but uh, and I ran from God, but I never said in my heart or in my mind there is no God. Uh, I was unhappy with God, but I still believed that there was a God. And uh, honestly, a lot of this uh, I hear a lot of rebuttals not in your not in your video, but in others that uh, well I don't like a God that does this. Therefore. If a god does this, then there can't be a god. That's that's ridiculous. If your boss does something you like, dislike, and there's no way a boss could be so mean, you'll be surprised. A boss could be so mean, and uh, that doesn't mean he's not real. That just means he does stuff you don't like. So anyways, that's not what you were talking about, but uh, just because you don't like what God does doesn't mean God isn't real. But anyways, I believe there's a god. I've always believed there's a god. I've never been an atheist, so I'm not going to claim to know... Uh, what atheists go through. However, I have been a, a, a Christian for a very long time. I grew up in church. Uh, I, I, again, ran from God. I, I studied other things and looked at other churches and other religions. I've been to a Buddhist church, Hindu church, Quaker church, uh, all kinds of different stuff. And uh, I just think Christianity is uh, where it's at. And uh, I've, I've grown, like I said, I grew up in church. I've, I've served in church. I ran from God in church. I returned to God in church. And uh, even been a uh, minister on staff at a church and uh, hope to continue to be and uh, in the future. What the, with that said, I don't assume to speak for every Christian. And I definitely don't assume to speak for everyone who claims to be a Christian. Uh, and there may be some Christians out there who don't agree with me, but I'm kind of hoping that number is small. Um, the very first thing I want to hit on uh, about your video is you said... Uh, Christians make a claim of my life would be meaningless without God. I'm kind of surprised you don't uh, agree with that. I have, uh, 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 you know, I actually have just like one friend who's an atheist, but uh, every atheist I've ever heard knows that without a God, if this life was just all by chance and random explosions, the Big Bang and random happenings, th th there's no purpose. And like you said, uh, that later on in your video, that everything's just kind of random happenings for no reason that that it doesn't have a purpose well you know by your view nothing has a purpose and without a God there is no purpose but I believe there is a God and I believe that that God made us for a purpose you see when you create something you create it for a purpose and I believe we've been created which means we have a purpose we don't just get made for no reason that's a waste of time and I don't think God's a really big time waster uh, you can give yourself a purpose, but that's kind of like a, a drop giving it uh, a, a drop giving itself a purpose. A, a drop is nothing compared to the ocean, and we are nothing compared to time. 
And for us to give ourselves a purpose is kind of like that drop giving itself a purpose. It can do it if it wants, but it's not really going to amount to much. Ultimately, uh, a purpose given to yourself is no no real purpose, worthy, worth purpose. It's it's a it's a feeble, useless pursuit. Uh, so yeah, without God, there's no purpose. Uh, your next comment was atheists can make moral decisions based on the specific context. Uh, I'm not saying you can't, but there's a flaw in that statement. In order to make a moral decision, you have to have a moral law. And in order to have a moral law, you have to have a moral law giver. Okay? And that moral law giver not only has to be powerful enough to give it, but it has to be powerful enough to enforce it and it has to be expected of everyone otherwise that's not really moral that's just uh, bias uh, throw it on anybody you like anytime you want that's not morality that's that's just ridiculous uh, bias I, I don't know how else to describe it off the top of my head um, so the more to have to say that atheists make a moral decision uh, you have to have a moral law to compare it to and without a moral law giver you don't have a moral law and without a moral law you don't know whether or not you're doing something moral so uh, with that said um, uh, yeah let's see it, it, you so you are simply left to make a choice that makes you or other feel others feel good and no matter what it is moral or not so it's kinda of like saying if you don't like absolute law which is kinda of what we're talking about here moral absolute law uh, then you would have no problem with someone coming in your house robbing you and killing you and I'm sure you've heard that before and it sounds kinda of silly but without absolute moral law that person could justify whatever they want in their mind such as maybe they believe that you deserve it therefore killing you was a good thing maybe they thought and believed that you were going to do something incredibly bad later so they just define in their head that it's okay to kill you um, that's not moral that's that's self-justification and uh, it's crazy uh, moral law absolute moral law exists to bring um, and ma order maintain order and safety you see God doesn't just th come up with uh, rules on sin just to uh, be a, a, a party pooper or a downer of some sort or a big cosmic kill, killjoy. Uh, God comes up with, came up with moral laws. Uh, I, I think C.S. Lewis said it best to show us how the human machine is to be run. Uh, so it's not just there to ruin your partying weekend. It's there to show you, hey, you know what? Maybe getting drunk's not the best idea because you have car wrecks and die. You have liver failure you have alcohol poisoning I'm not against alcohol I'm against the overuse of alcohol uh, but and I, uh, so that's why God gives us the law it is not so that and, and, uh, and morality it's not so that he can uh, you know press us down under his thumb and make us bummed it's so that way we can live longer and not um, get just destroyed by these harmful things. Uh, if you love someone, you'll hate the things that harm them. Uh, and that's what happens with God. He loves us so much, He hates the things that harm us. And that's why He tells us uh, what's right and what's wrong. On your point about hiding the Jews in the attic, most Christians, I'll be honest with you right now, most Christians would tell you, yes, I would lie. Uh, but that isn't exactly what Scripture teaches us to do. You're right, the Bible does say, tell the truth no matter what. Uh, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, we as humans have a limited amount of information. We can go on and, uh, let me see here. We have a limited amount of information we can go on in order to make a decision. But the Bible teaches that God uh, has unlimited amount of information. And He has already made the decision for us and has told us to tell the truth. Which means God knows more, so I'm going to trust His decision more. Uh, and I think we pretty much do that our entire lives, and it doesn't make sense for us to not do that with God. We trust our parents, we trust our teachers, we trust uh, all kinds of people in our lives who know more than us. It doesn't make sense not to trust God who knows more than us. Um, 
uh, the Bible teaches us that he knows more and that he has made a decision for us and that uh, telling the truth is going to be what's best. You never know how God's going to use someone's death. Uh, you see, when you have a purpose and you were made for a purpose uh, and you were created for a purpose, death is included in that purpose. There are countless testimonies of people who, sh uh, who have shared about how the loss of a loved one has saved their lives or changed the lives of many others. And so, uh, in those cases, the, the person's uh, excuse me, all this stuttering. Uh, the person's life was not wasted. Um, a good example of that is uh, Rachel. She was killed in Columbine many years ago, but since she died, her family carried on her legacy and started a program called Rachel's Challenge. Uh, something that probably wouldn't have been started unless that had happened. And 13 people were killed at Columbine, but now. Every year, two million students are reached. It's just amazing how death can be used for good. And now all these kids, two million kids a year, hear about bullying and how to treat others right and uh, with dignity and respect. Uh, also, you kind of make an assumption here. You, uh, If you lied about a Jew being in your house and the Germans found out, you wouldn't be helping. You would have made things worse. Because they would have come back and killed you and your the Jew and your entire family. So not only has the Jew died, but you have died too. And maybe that story of that one Jew could have been carried on by that family and told to other people and made a better influence. But if you lie and they kill everybody, no one can carry on the, 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 the story of that one Jew. So you can't assume that by lying everything's just going to turn out better because you're not guaranteed that. But the Bible teaches that when you follow God, it always turns out better. It may turn out harder. It may turn out more painful. But it always turns out better in the end. Uh, you said that uh, atheists uh, can get outraged when a friend dies. As if Christians can't. Christians are allowed to be outraged. But uh, the deal is, is that I know my family and my close friends are Christians and when they die I can know that they are I believe that they are gonna be better off than they are now uh, so I don't really need to be outraged in fact it's a little bit of a celebration because they've lived a good life they are good people my father has worked hard my mother is a school teacher she has worked hard and made an influence on so many kids lives and I can celebrate their life and I can celebrate their new life with their father in heaven which is uh, just, man, it's, it's exciting to even think about it. Um, I will be sad when I lose my parents, when I lose my friends to death, when things happen that are outrageous and uh, hurt. I will be hurt. But um, I will also be able to rejoice that my mom is with her creator, that my dad is with her creator, that my grandma is free from disease and no longer uh, bedridden. I, I can rejoice in those things. And I, if I feel outraged, I am welcome to be outraged. God does not want us to hide our emotions. He already knows our heart. And there's no sense in hiding from Him. In fact, the Bible teaches us not to hide behind veils, but to become unveiled before God. We're real and transparent. God does not, uh, the Bible does not teach uh, what a lot of Christians believe, that we have to have uh, a, a, a life that looks like we have it all together. That's not what the Bible teaches. Because if you look at all the people throughout Scripture, a lot of the disciples and a lot of the guys in the Old Testament, these guys were all having issues. Uh, but Jesus comes in and saves the day. God comes in and saves the day. That's the message of Christianity, not we Christians have it together. The, the message of Christianity is that God has put us back together. That's the message of Christianity. So anyways, I'll go on here. It says, uh, you said... Uh, we, talking about the atheists, use science to understand uh, catastrophes, uh, kind of implying that Christians don't use science to understand catastrophes. Oh, yeah, and that we just rely on uh, some, some big man magic or something like that. I can't remember exactly what you said. Uh, Christians are not against science. Uh, I want to make that clear. Christians are not against science. Science shows us so many things. And I personally believe that they show us so many things about God. And a lot of Christians believe that. There are so many Christians who are even scientists. Uh, a big name one is uh, Dr. Francis Collin. He's, uh, he's Collins. 
He's the head of Human Genome Project and one of the world's uh, he is one of the world's largest uh, leading scientists. Excuse me. He works at the cutting edge of DNA study. So he's studying DNA. This man is not afraid to dig in. And I'll tell you what, um, there but Christians are by no mean afraid of science. Luke uh, wrote the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts and was a physician. And this guy practiced medicine. 